been a big conversation around um, cli climate grief and, and the stages of, of uh, climate grief. And I know IPCC has been doing all these reports, and I think we've heard it again and again. <laughs> like, so hopeless. <laughs> it's depressing. And, and it is the way it is. Yes, yes. So it is the way it is. Yes, it I has know. always been that we have to change our brains. But this but, is the way we function. But Remember? I'm wondering if there needs to be some sort of report on solutions, focused on solutions. I mean, we don't hear enough of of this. So when we're not, this sort of inaction is coming from just this lack of <laughs> solutions, I think. I mean, you've seen that the broken third down chapter, the third chapter is just related to solutions. So we have many. Or, in or maybe, I mean, I, I guess in, public, in the public sphere, it seems as if it's not palatable yet for the, like, the mainstream or, I mean, something. Like we have social media, right? So it just seems that it's not being optimized to like angle towards the solutions that are available in like local communities, and, like prioritizing certain solutions for local. Like I understand to to work locally and then spread it out from there, but it just I mean. <laughs> and this the spread is something we don't know if it is efficient or not. Yeah. Right. There might be some solution there, here, now, but not tomorrow. I mean, this large uncertainty is really the one which is uh, uh, providing uh, most of the fuel for the uh, anxiety and negative cognition uh, effect, the one that was uh, getting up. And this is, uh, I don't remember where it is, but um, you have seen that questioning that is always, uh, and that we all have. I had that 10 years ago, was like, what's, what's, what's going on? With? And still you're trying to bring scientific elements to assess, to share with uh, colleagues, or to participate into what would be the largest way of trying things. And still, decision, the political decision, and, and, and the, just the way the world is going is not in the proper way. It's because we have all the consequences that our behavior, previous behavior, with the same brains, with the same connection, with the same way of uh, getting the energy for something, which is the prison survival, the survival of your generation, the expansion of your capacities, and whatever would be the most uh, advanced species, all of them would be the same, would do the same. That's the question. I mean, if you are looking at the uh, yellow marmot in California, the climate change is uh, excellent for them. No predator. They went up in February instead of March. Getting up, getting big, getting fat, getting numerous. Same thing. Except that uh, sometimes uh, it will be too hot for them too. See? Um, so we, we don't have, we didn't have the knowledge. Now we have it. Is it useful? <laughs> That's a real question. I'm kind of interested in your take as a sociologist, because I guess, are you interested as a sociologist? Is that correct? No. Ah, oh, sorry, OK. <laughs> well, it's a slightly different question, but because I thought at the start of your presentation that maybe you were indicating that degrowth could be an option. I, I don't know whether I was picking up on that correctly. It's not a solution. You it's not an option. Yeah. It will be. So this is something that is commonly discussed, I guess, in IPCC, or what is the di dialogue within the IPCC? And we have that in the corridors. We can, uh, yeah. as soon as we enter into session, we have an agenda. There are questions that are uh, given by um, the governments and say, well, you have to do that in the next years. So try to make all the science available, try to make a few ideas out of them, and, and try to get solution. They are asking for solution. So that's why a third of the work First physics, second consequences, third is solution. So a third of the work was done to provide solution. And there are, again, thousands of solutions. But what's missing 
We have many. If you read them carefully, it means growth, it means questioning capitalism. So why why media are probably not advocating much yeah. about the solution? Yeah. Because the solution is a big change in the way our economies are operating. I don't know if you if you agree on, on, my, on, on this point of view. And one question in relation to your to your I mean, to your topic, we thought somebody think that after the virus, after the COVID, something changed. Maybe because we understand better the fact that there is a relation between uh, our, the way our economies are operating and the emergence of vi vi viruses. And the, then we, we have to change something. And it seems that nothing is changing. So is there any discussion? Uh, in fact, in we, we just accelerated the technology steps. And it worked. A vaccine in less than a year, in less than a year. It's just a, a miracle, they said. A miracle? Well, I mean, you're just providing that for all population. The gain, this is one of the chapter I just uh, uh, skipped, uh, is that during the moment you use those non-pharmacological uh, intervention, lockdowns and everything, I mean, the health of more than 100 countries were down because no nutrition, no programs of prevention, no vaccination against, uh, no uh, prevention on AIDS, on tuberculosis, on malaria, everything was done. And they said, well, well, well it's because those countries will, will have problem with COVID. Where? You have seen the relation with COVID? It's just due to development, to aging population, most of it. I was exaggerating a little bit, but it's not the question. Of, and then they decided not to put money anymore on the uh, uh, food programs, prevention programs. Well, that's a huge, huge impact. So very much linked to that uh, and related to the first part of the presentation, when you were mentioning about like this holistic approach and, and one global health, uh, isn't it like the COVID, like do you think the COVID response was like okay uh, a new way of addressing, of tackling these world issues in a more holistic approach, or it's just another expression of global inequalities because it was affecting a very particular demographic of the world. So age population in Europe mainly for the first time compared to other diseases that are killing people everywhere in the world for decades. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and exactly that, like that actually led to the redistribution of resources to a very specific thing affecting the mental health of billions of people, so like, is, is this really like, okay, we have a solution here because we're addressing the things globally and there was this uh, Vax found, uh, global found, I don't remember the name, or is it just like another expression of that? Just well, this is the impact that you have when you compare those um, diseases, here is COVID, with the age of the population, okay? Here is malaria, huge impact on the infants and young. Okay? This is tuberculosis and this is AIDS. Okay? All this is in terms of mortality and impact through what could be, should be used, which are the DALIs. DALIs and CODIs are uh, disability adjusted life years lost. Okay? Meaning you have the in public health, you have the uh, elements, you have the uh, parameters that you have to track, you have to follow to understand what would be the impact of it. In the sub-Saharan country, that's 3% of all the impact, 3%, not more, okay? So you say, well, maybe you should use those indicators to track what you've done. And then from that, you make the complete evaluation, again, the holistic way of getting, and then you see that, well, I mean, the costs are much higher than we believe. And the benefits may be much less. Okay, so you say that in the early weeks of the pandemics, we have to track what public health should tell us. I mean, this is, there is no way there is lockdown for everyone, especially for the um, wealthy people, the deceased people, have to be taken out 
of the communication of the disease for a few days on this one. And even the health minister in France, Olivier Véran, said in his book just two weeks ago, well, in most of the cases, this is just a small temperature increase, and that's it. I mean, two years later, he say that when he said in 2020, this is the equivalent of the black plague. They said it night after night. They said it. It's our black plague. Really? If you use those, which should be what uh, would be the right way, you have to make what the right simulation would provide in terms of what years of life would be lost. Should we have just two weeks more for the 80 years old, 90 years old, 100 years old? Well, they decided to do it. Again, I am exaggerating a little bit. But still, at the same time, you have lost many of your social environment, of your interaction, of the way to understand the world, of the way to make your future. Okay? It was decided by many countries, and all the uh, flags were in the same direction. Because China said, well, that's the way we did it. Iran, Italy, and then France and Spain, and everyone said, well, well, we have to put everyone in the cave. Why? Where is it written? Do we do that? Did we make the right appreciation, the right evaluation? Did we start an observation of what we have done to be sure in the next year that we can make it again? If this is efficient, we will make it again. Did we do that? Did we do that? We didn't. At all. Well, you can express a few of you varieties in the early <laughs> weeks of the uh, the pandemics uh, thereafter you're blacklisted and that's it so you cannot have those mixture of scientific decision even inside the scientific community and the political agenda there are two different uh, and for the climate it's the same i mean you say this is renewable energy which is a solution maybe that's the one at the pace at the rate at the uh, scale that we need, I'm not sure, but let's imagine this is the solution. Okay, so it means that everyone has to do it, right? Okay, so then you will ask Vladimir to just put electricity in his tanks and then get up with electric vehicles. Do we do that? Can we do it? There is no way. This is always an interaction and a struggle between what I said at the end, the adaptive capacity and what the environment provides. And there is a human environment. And the human session right now is trying to make things up. The scientific section is getting way up. It has improved a lot. The action, the political action, is not there. Can we make things together, uh, except during the COVID, which, which is very funny, in fact. Except during the COVID, with that uh, small grain of sun, as one uh, film mentioned it, uh, we have every government, every state doing roughly uh, at the beginning, just at the beginning. Afterwards, it was changing, but many, especially in Europe, I mean, there was only Sweden. We didn't say, well, we have to follow everyone. Only Sweden said that. Two years later, they have the same impact. Roughly, same impact. Should we have done it? Was it properly measured? Was it properly assessed? Should we make the recommendation for the next one? We don't. So it's a, a real question of knowing and acting. I have a question about, uh, you talked about the value to shape of literacy you can find out where the individual. And my, I was wondering about like, if we can have an analogy of this curve for civilization. Um, because, for instance, there's this famous paradox from uh, Antico Ferry, for which like, it's weird that we never have a connection with aliens and extraterrestrial life. And he explained one of the, the, the explanations of this might be the technology. When we reach uh, such a level of technology, we just destroy our self situation. The complexity of the system will prevent us to do it. 
before, except what Princeton said, if every nuclear head is thrown into it. And even, even with that, there will be a huge amount uh, of death in the few hours. There will be the uh, long-term consequences, and then it will restart. You can see that in the uh, Pipriat forest all around, despite the fact that the Russian army went inside and then get her again uh, irradiated. So it, life will go on. No problem with life, no problem with planet. Planet is fine. This is one of the references I put it inside. This is George Carlin. Civilization is fine. <laughs> again, uh, we believe that we believed in something that was up much too high in regard to what we can uh, really target. Now it's the way we have to again project our future. We still want to idealize our relation. We don't want to have fight. We don't want to make peace. We want to be comfortable. We want to have heat in winter, food every day, and everything and everything. What are the basics? And then we grow. We not only grow in size, in height, we grow in numbers. Same as the yellow marmot in California. Same thing. But during two centuries. Now, <laughs> we are uh, in front of what are all the consequences of what we have done. And this is not only a question of uh, working together. Working together is tough, very tough. The question is outside, there are consequences. Because we are, in fact, not outside, it's inside a system that we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. seen the situation with the floodings and everything. You know, Pakistan contributes like 1% of the global emissions, but despite that, it's the most effective, effective country right now. So like, there have been like 50 million people displaced and more than $10 billion uh, damages, financial damages. So as you mentioned that no amount of like financial compensation is enough to recover from this. But then, what is the way forward then for a country like Pakistan or any other country that is being affected by climate change? What is the... I didn't get the word. Way forward. The way forward. The way forward. Yeah, like, same as Gwen was saying, like, what is the solution? Uh, uh, what I provide here is a global uh, frame with a few original way of... Uh, trying to understand the dynamics uh, and the evolution of the situation. Um, specifically, and depending on what will be the uh, decision of the local governments, of the local interaction, of the uh, compromises for the political action. Remember the political agenda is five years long at the maximum. It's usually one year in Italy, even in the, uh, in the UK, sure, sure of the democracy in the countries and everything, in the, but whatever they say, it's one year. Usually after one or two years, governments are getting out. What do you want to do when you are inside the power? You want to keep it. So you project on the next election rate, and that's it. That's your future. The very long term, as I mentioned, is something that you cannot provide inside the agenda. There was one uh, minister, um, Nicolas Hulot, who came into the French government to try to bring those inside. Uh, they had conversation with Edouard Philippe, the prime minister at the moment. Uh, they tried to put a few institutions. And it didn't work. It didn't work because they said, well, this, should, this agency should work for 50 years. With what money? What is the pledge? What is the insurance that you will... Uh, no, no, we cannot do that. We have an agency for one year, two years, and then we assess if it makes the right job. Again, I don't know what are the compromises, what are the... We have seen historically how Pakistan uh, went into uh, those. And again, uh, this country is hardly affected, but as with, like many others, Tuvalu, uh, island the Pacific with the uh, submersion risks and, and, and many of those 
will disappear, just disappear. Pakistan will have, but there is huge land. So this question of uh, getting on other places. But for us, same thing. I mean, if you see Le Havre, Le Port de Dunkerque, uh, Harbour, uh, Bordeaux, which is under the water, under the water in a few decades. So it means that one of the extreme events of the 30s or the 40s will just have huge impact on those uh, industrial uh, and uh, regional um, bases. So um, there are some uh, way of getting those parameters, those uh, projection, what the political uh, will do from that. And you know, as usual, uh, how it works, and especially under the economical pressure that we will have, how the regression in terms of democracy, I mentioned very briefly also, uh, will be. That's why for more than 40 years now, you see the extremes right and left getting up, even uh, in the uh, European democracies, getting up progressively because of the constraint that coming to the system. And because we are no longer able to progress, to grow, because we're in the city. Well, it's your fault. You cannot make us grow. Your fault. OK, then they come up to the uh, power. Boom. One year later, you don't have a solution. Acceptation is a solution. Well, philosophy. Well, this is the way how to learn how to die, all right? How to make it? No, no. Uh, OK, my question is a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> okay, sure. uh, you mentioned that Europe uh, don't have the renewable energy resources to replace fossil fuels. Uh, In Europe, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Europe. Where are you from? From Egypt. Egypt. Um, and um, Europe is like uh, contributing heavily to the emissions. But on the other hand, Africa and um, I would say Egypt also has an advantage, on the other hand, on renewable energy. But um, it needs like a huge, le large level of knowledge and uh, infrastructure. So it needs more funding and investment, I would say, from Europe. Um, so how do, you s how do you imagine the, like, the future of international cooperation on this um, issue? Like, um, for me, it can be like pessimistic, uh, returning back to exploitation. You're having like um, renewable energy resources from African countries, uh, but it can be like on, on the positive side, um, a change in the uh, power dynamics, like Africa having more advantage or a competitive advantage on this matter. Um, you like still Europe. depend on many material conditions, right? Morocco did that for huge solar farms in the south uh, of the Atlas. Uh, so you have places, yes, um, but you still need to bring material inside and then to maintain uh, and then to renew what would be uh, the solar panels every eight years, roughly. This is the half-life. So it means that uh, it's not a plan on the century. You need to make all those farms uh, come back and have an industrial uh, um, background and the basis to make all those. It's not that uh, it's doable. Uh, so in terms of energy, you have part of the solution. Again, the density and the surfaces required to have the same uh, usage as the one you need for the uh, Egyptian population, for example, and provide the food for it. Remember in 208 and the 211 elements were related to uh, the uh, beginning of the nutrition problem. So the hunger um, riots in 208. Remember in uh, 20 countries uh, all over the, the world and in Egypt uh, too. Um, so the question is, what are the uh, scales that are uh, meetable or not when you will replace fossil fuel by uh, renewable? 
it may be the case if you're covering uh, the desert by uh, solar panels, but you still need to have the action of man to bring that inside the desert, to maintain that inside the desert, and then to uh, use it for the whole population. Question is not that simple, otherwise it would have been done. Right away, we have the technology. The question is how the expansion is done and how easy is it when you have the facility of having just a drop of energy <coughs> making change everything. The heat in that, the cloth you have, the food that is brought into your uh, plate and everything. The question of having electricity replacing everything again relates to what I said previously. Will we have electric tanks in the next war? Not sure. You were saying that it's a matter of time, like needs longer periods to be able to implement. Yeah, so it's the question, but it's more than that. It's also the maintenance, meaning what are the uh, pressure inside those regions uh, to have to replace every eight years or every two years. If you have sun, sun, uh, storms, uh, all this, maybe the usual uh, life expectancy of your material is not the one you will have uh, in the real life in the desert. You, you have huge farms in the south of Egypt right now that have been developed and huge uh, compounds and huge projects, not only the new capital, but many places that should benefit from those investments. On what are they based? On fossil fuels. Most of them. Most of them. Yeah, because investing in, in renewable energy needs like huge planning, long term, everything. Yeah. 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 So this is what I meant that Europe can be can provide this, um, or like international uh, domain <coughs> funds to be able to provide renewable energy because Europe needs this now because it, it doesn't have renewable mm. energy resources. So, like, let me ask another question. What are your plan currently to face the problem? Like my plan to face the problem? No, Europe, or Europe my plan to face my problem? <laughs> <laughs> what is your question? I said Europe plans to replace it. the problem it faces right now uh, from Russia. Not so At that state? Okay. At that state? You think there are ways of coming inside the... Uh, UN session and say, well, I have the solution, listen to me. That's it. I, I, I am get you. not that ambition. I like what I'm saying. The, the, that the, the way I went, if, if I may, the way I went inside that game is I wanted to understand. Through scientific education, I wanted just to add a few answers to my questions. Now I have all this, it's just 100 more questions. As usual, I mean, as soon as you get into the research process, you have one answer, you have 10 questions. You have 10 questions, you have 10 answers, you have 100 questions. And this is the way we progress because of our brain. Because this is the way you project onto the future, the way you are understanding and understanding the fact that you don't understand and you want to. In fact, you have understood at what scale it is, you know that it might not be at the human scale. At the mankind's scale, yes, but at the human and our personal scale, might not be. It's just maybe just a question of scale. Yes. Individual or the uh, Earth. Well, what's actually the technique of like asking more questions uh, because, yeah, I, I believe that uh, the correct problem solving starts with asking the right question, like finding. Though it's problem. not a technique, it's the way we <coughs> progressed for. Uh, 300,000 years. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is maybe a bit controversial, but considering that from what you post, there is a problem, there is like a, not a link between what science says and what politicians do. And Despite the fact that you will say we are based yeah. on the science. Yeah. And considering the fact that um, there is uh, like this aged population, especially in Western Europe, that 
is responsible in a way for a lot of the overconsumption and depletion and they were like the main beneficiaries. I will just keep your question. Yeah. I will just make a parenthesis because many of viewers asked in Pakistan and Egypt that question you are responsible for. This is the way that the uh, political discussion are taken at the top, the COP. Okay? It's always, well, we are suffering and you are responsible. In fact, everyone is responsible. And no one, of course, no one is guilty from what the previous generation did. We have to address the problem that we have on the shoulders. Oh, the question is, the impact will be higher there, here, uh, th but it, the impact will be everywhere if this is the extinction which is in question. That's a problem of everyone. Not only the repartition, uh, and especially because the way that they will deal with the problem is we don't care. We have seen it during the COVID. We have seen it during the COVID. Excuse me, I come back. Finish your question. So, um, so we have these older generations that are like very much responsible for what's happening now, but are going to die in 10 years, 20 years, but they still vote, they still elect, and they are like a very important electorate, whereas young people... You are important as well. Eh? Whereas like at the Choose bottom... Choose to elect, you are important as bottom, well uh, in democracy. People can vote only when they are 18, not when they are like 16 or 15 or 14. So. And a lot of like the social expenditure is compromised because these older people do vote and do have our electorate, whereas the younger not. For example, I come from Uruguay, which had a very early demographic transition, so we have a very large population. 80% of the social expenditure goes to the over 65 people, whereas the, there's like 50% of the children are born in poverty. So like <laughs> the future is being compromised by those who are going to die in the next years, but they still vote. So wouldn't like maybe a very radical change be the way in which we vote and like the age limits and both at the lower and the upper margin and also like the age that people can be elected for places. I don't know how is it here, but in my country you can only, you have to be at least 45 to become president and 35 mm -hmm. to become a senator and I think 25 to become a representative. Mm -hmm. So if those were actually lowered and there would be a cap on like, you can vote if you exceeded the life expectancy of your country, for example, because I mean, you've already exceeded. So like the fact that you're like leaving, it means that on average, there is someone else who is not making it. And normally it's based on gender, racial, and many other inequalities. Get like, rid of the old ones. Eh? Get rid of the old ones. Not get rid of the old ones, so but like, the option that you like uh, shift a bit uh, the weight, the, 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 the ponderation, yeah. the, 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 the capacity. I mean, there are many in complex systems yeah. for, for many time now based on very old, uh, even life expectancies, like why people vote when they're 18 and not 16 or 14. There are many try of getting election processes more equilibrated. Um, equilibrated and uh, a lot of solution or a lot of options sorry uh, have been proposed tested uh, saying this kind of things or uh, changing the way that the election itself is uh, done instead of saying yes or no he or she uh, you would have a more more uh, detailed way of answering questions and then have the agenda to have the, uh, but despite that fact, you may have answers which are not the proper ones. And we usually see that in France when we have referendum. Referendum is the way you are asking everyone inside the country just to answer what question. And usually just answer the opposite question. You say, this is the government which is asking the question, so I am telling the government that he should get away. You are not answering the question on nuclear, renewable energy, or uh, things like that. The way is just re answering the guy who is asking the question, not the question. So there are many ways of having an idealized way of uh, getting together because this is the rules that we are uh, giving uh, to uh, a population to make a kind of stability, a kind of uh, acceptable uh, way of uh, answering 
the problems. But usually you will end up with opposite answers, not because these questions were badly uh, asked, but because they don't want to ask. They don't want to answer. <laughs> want to send a message. So it's a, it's a way a few others, and especially in Scandinavian country, people are from Sweden, Norwegian, or uh, Denmark here. Yeah. But th th there are options that uh, have been addressed in Switzerland too. Uh, many of the votation, regular votation, uh, asking what, what do you want here and now? Okay, so I answer. The, uh, six months later, you have an assessment of what has been decided and uh, what has changed in your daily life. So those elements may help. But as you mentioned, the uh, number of democracies went up. You had a ceiling in the uh, early 21st, and now it is slowly getting down. Same process, same process. I don't remember, yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Um, first, I have two remarks. Um, I think the reason why there is seemingly foot, foot dragging um, in terms of um, taking conscious action to, uh, to decarbonize is the public good nature of the environment. Because if everyone is responsible for the negative effects of their own pollution, I think there would have been more drastic action. And secondly, uh, please permit me to disagree with a particular point that you said uh, we are all responsible. I don't think we are all responsible because um, if you look at the, uh, the greenhouse gas inventory, like we all know, the, uh, the contribution of Global South and um, some countries in Asia is like almost insignificant. And even though um, the current- I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, I agree. What I said is not opposing to that element. We agree on that Oh, okay. Yeah. Question is what we would do in the situation. Yes, happening. yes, and also. Then you see that every kind of societies, they all get up to fossil energy. They all get up to growth. They all want to have the development inside the sustainable development yeah. goal. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, and also I feel that, um, I, um, I feel that the at this point, at this point of Africa's development, there is a need for less emphasis on sustainable development. Because if we look at the development trend, most of the countries that have developed rapidly, even China, developed at huge environmental cost. And looking at um, the greenhouse gas contribution of Africa to development, to, uh, sorry, to, the, to greenhouse gas, and at this stage of our development, like at this rising stage of our development, it's been dragged uh, into the whole source sustainable growth. Can Africa afford to develop sustainably at this point? Wouldn't, wouldn't that stifle her growth? Uh, because most of this, um, most of the European countries actually develop through the carbon part. And uh, we all know um, the slow, the slow process, um, the slow process sustainable development usually um, takes. So at this point, can we drag Africa into this whole sustainable growth part when it's still dealing with basic problems like uh, electricity, good roads, high bone water, and um, we should start thinking about sustainable development that requires time, big, um, huge resources, and effort. And also, there is this case of moral hazard from European countries because right now there is this consistent pressure on African countries to grow sustainably, else, some grants will not be given, some, uh, some policies won't go in our favor, etc. So, in the, con in the context of environmental justice, is this fair enough that? Okay, you have developed, you have polluted, and right now everyone should like, okay, be sustainable. You, you, you put the right terms inside the discussion. Justice, development, and I add democracy. Okay. Do we have all this in the cocktail for the next decade? I'm not sure. Because what we have realized as a justice and uh, as a way of having the right repartition of responsibilities, of costs, of consequences. It has always been the same in the historical uh, way. That's why I started with the uh, funerals. Okay? You see the symbol. Then, if the political agenda is there, you would have to track a follow. The question is now the steps of growth that we would like for everyone 
will be costly and will add, as China, you mentioned it, as China demonstrated in the last three decades. Okay, they started in 78, roughly, decided to have a Communist Party saying that development will be uh, the important things, having political decisions such as the uh, um, one uh, child policy or many specificity to, but still having the same usage of energy and now just predating all African countries to get food, to get uh, uh, a, a lot of what the billion point four people uh, need, really need, or just being there, wanted to have. It's a question. The development as we have it is, a, do you know what is the life expectancy, the mean life expectancy? You have seen a few. Uh, it is now 72 today for the world, okay? 72 years old. Mean, uh, what is the mean life expectancy of the humanity? You have an answer for that? It's 30. It's 30 years old, no more. Maybe, maybe perhaps less. Why? Because over the 300,000 years, we just add only 10 generations with a huge change due to the development, due to the use of uh, wood, coal, oil, gas, and then some renewable at the end of the 20th century. So the question is really, what are the equilibrium point for the survival on the very long term? It's not on the political agenda. You cannot ask those questions. But in the scientific agenda, we have to answer those. If this is 28 and we will be at a different level of demography and population, this is not something I can talk in the next year here. See? That's a question. It's really, so I mean for that, the political decision that we will have to try to make those justice, those element of, uh, this is something that environment is not taking care of. And that will provide pressure on our systems. That's what we understand now. So what will be the point of equilibrium? We don't know, but not at the place where it is now. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yep. Stop, 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 stop. Say it again. Uh, I have a question regarding the phenotype uh, part of the presentation. Yep. Uh, because if we the take phenotypic into expansion? Yeah. Let, let's take into account that the uh, phenotype is adaptable. And if uh, the adaptability of the phenotype <coughs> is uh, like it, it's not rigid uh, and if we are having all of these uh, environmental changes that are causing changes in the, in the lives of living organisms at what point does phenotype stop being adaptable and starts being rigid now here it's exactly the principle of the presentation it's just put the finger on we are now is my interpretation. Again, what I bring here is my interpretation of all the scientific results we had in many directions and the fact that I worked in different domains and uh, mixing everything, so it's just a pure stupid mix, maybe. But I'm asking those questions and the question of the margin of adaptation is really the one, there is one book inside that I mentioned. L'homme peut-il s'adapter à lui-même? Can man adapt to himself? This is a congress we had in uh, 2010 in the Museum uh, of Histoire Naturelle in uh, Paris. Uh, and we had people from many different horizons, politicians, economists, uh, scientific, in the biodiversity, in the health and, uh, and everything, just to ask those questions. Do, do, do you have the sense of those ceilings now that I am touching? And the guy said, yes, and you, uh, me too, a and you, oh, okay, yeah, uh, agriculture, yeah, you yield, you, yeah, maybe there are a few things. And progressively, we had, in the last decade, all those elements just popping up. 
Whatever. So the question of adaptation is really that. We have the increase and what I assess, what I uh, see, what I observe, that it's no longer progressing, despite the fact that uh, Mondo du Plantis, for those who know what the pole vault is, had a few centimeters more in the last years. Who cares? It is at 618 now. I mean, it's not at uh, 22. With a pole vault, you cannot get up to 22. So between 22 and 616, 18, now uh, there is some places where the limit is. That's what we asked 12 years ago, 14 years ago, in fact. Uh, and the question is, in your domains, in agriculture, in uh, food supply, in public health, do you have the same? Well, in life expectancy also. That's why it's not a surprise to see that USA, UK went down just by one pandemic. Okay, they say it's a huge pandemic, it's the plague. No, it isn't. Why did it have that impact? It's because we are vulnerable, okay? We are no longer adaptable. There might be some places, some local places where you could have some adaptation and some good solution. Maybe that's the renewable in south of Egypt, maybe not in the north, because you need to have the Nile producing food. You won't put uh, solar farms inside the Nile Delta, right? I would be surprised that there uh, would be a solution on that, but uh, this is even a question that you can ask. You have the, that there might be some places where you can have that. The general direction, the orientation that we are following uh, is different, and I mean, we, we arrive at those ceilings, seems. So the question of adaptation is there, margin of adaptation. Do we have those? There might be some places where, and you have to find them. You have to find them, which is not an easy task, <laughs> including uh, from what I mentioned on all the rest, meaning the ego anxiety, uh, the uh, worry about the future, uh, about your children, the next generation, and so on. So it's a complex system that we had in the early 70s, 80s, but with very different questions and very different options, sure. Um, yeah, since, since positive outlook seem not to be the theme of today, I wanted to try to go in a different direction with this. Um, do you think it's a, like a, a scenario that, like, for example, because we talk about Europe, right? That Europe just gets no, no, like no, we are talking no, no, but can I everywhere? Yes, please. Um, but from a European perspective, you're European, I'm European. Yeah? Um, that Europe will just get more authoritarian and violent because, like, the the, the scenario seems right. Like, just enough people need to die, right. and then it's <laughs> going to be fine. <laughs> That's the thing, right? So, is, do you think it's realistic that Europe will just get like super authoritarian, super violent, and will just try to keep as many of the surviving people Europeans? Because that, like, with all we've discussed so far, it seems like a very probable scenario, right? I don't know if it's probable, but I mean, these are a few of those that seems to be coming for the next year. You have read perhaps uh, La Route from Cormac McCarthy. Okay, see what uh, kind of environment is inside this bust moment. Um, so I don't know what should be the, the, the right solution is still to try to work together, to try to talk together, try to put bad question inside the debate and not being uh, raped or uh, assassinated by the fact of asking the question some places that could be. What you've seen in Europe now is uh, back to war. The last year we have seen a situation that we couldn't imagine despite the Crimea uh, in uh, 2014. Um, I mean, you, you, you see a situation where a mad guy, or not mad, don't know how he is, the healthy state, decide to bring back an option that we were not willing to see. Uh, and we have now the consequences of it in terms of energy and economy. 
are we able, despite the regression that we will suffer next winter and the next years, to still be able to talk together or to renounce to some advantages? What I have seen from the COVID is that the old guys were not ready to do that. They said to you, you will pay for us. We will pay for the few weeks we want, a few weeks more. I mean, in terms of dailies, we didn't earn that much during the decision and during the moments that uh, we have known in the 20 and 21. But uh, then uh, the question is, are we still able to make perspective, actions, proper question? And again, despite the fact that we are dealing with uh, anxious problems or anxiety generating problems. Uh, I mean, if you don't, that, if you don't do that, you, you are not at the proper place, either on the scientific side or on the political side. Now, the question is that usually the political just say, well, I have understood that, but I took it under the table and I'm no longer talking about it. If I mention that, is that because Nicolas Hulot, when he went and discussed to Edouard Philippe, Edouard Philippe was very much aware of the collapse literature by Charlotte Diamond and everyone, for example. He was very much aware. They were talking about that publicly. And then when the first situation came to make the right decision under a huge pressure of the COVID, what did he say? What did he say? To make the exact opposite. He didn't say, I'm taking the long term. He said, well, I am taking the short term of the re-election, of my place in the political landscape, of the majority and everything. And then you decide suddenly blum, 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 to put everyone in jail and say, well, should we just, uh, I mean, the, I, I use the words, the description of the sport people, the, the people active, just walking, you know, they were just following a suicide, collective suicide trajectory. Scientific council president said it. And now you have the science who says, well, the most active guys, they have twice lower rate of mortality due to COVID. So you should have done the exact opposite. You should have said, people run on the beaches instead of having 135 euros of fine getting there. So you see that, I mean, the options that are taken are depending on many other uh, constraints, which are the social, cultural, political, uh, intertwined uh, elements on that. I hope we are still able to address question. I hope we will be. And so far, we are not at that point. Though, the economical pressure that we will see in Germany, that we will see in the northern, in the eastern countries, in France as well, and Iran, will make different political landscape. You see in Italy next Sunday. I don't know what to get out of it. I hope you are full on hope. <laughs> Keep the hope. Somehow we don't, cannot do much more about it. Except have a good drink tonight. Thank you very much.